In every generation, there is a chosen show. It alone will combine action, teen humor, and TV-friendly horror into a 90s hit series. It is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hello, friends! Sarah Michelle Geller, who played the title character of this show, had a birthday recently, so I figured this would be the perfect time to look at the Halloween episodes from that show that made her a star. So, from worst to best, let's review the Halloween episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. In third place, it's All the Way, Season 6, Episode 6. At the start of this episode, Anya and Giles work overtime to meet the Halloween rush at the magic shop. Wonder how many of these people will just return everything on Thanksgiving. After the store finally closes and everyone's exhausted, Xander chooses this moment to make a big announcement. We're getting married. Oh my god. Congratulations. If you're wondering why only Dawn and Tara seem to be happy about this whole thing while everyone else is more shocked and confused, it could be because Anya was a terrifying demon just a few seasons ago, or because she's kind of the Cordelia of the group at this point. While we get several minutes of a Halloween party slash engagement celebration, there is unfortunately some arguing over Willow using her magic for almost everything. Why are you being like this? This isn't about me. This is so about you. You're always coming down on me for, for doing magic that couldn't harm a fly. This episode is definitely slower paced than others because it takes time to develop these intertwining plot lines. Buffy feels out of place after being brought back from the dead, Xander is feeling nervous about getting married, Giles and Tara are concerned about Willow using too much magic, Spike and Buffy have an awkward relationship, and Dawn is, well, a teenager. Which is what pushes the action part of this episode. Yes, it's a Dawn-heavy episode. Dawn claims to go over to a friend's house, but of course she's lying so she can hang out with this dude bro dumbass and his plank of wood and a letterman's jacket. Look, you don't have to do this. I know a worried boyfriend when I see one, he's really worried about you, Dawn. I will give the episode one positive in how it makes you think one character is the main villain, but then in a Buffy-style twist, that character is killed by the real villains of the story. The dude bros are actually vampires! You mean that wooden acting was a ploy? Clever bloodsucker. When the vamp bros call some buddies from out of nowhere, it's time for the Slayer, the Watcher, and the punk British vampire to kick some ass. The choreography of this episode, like many others, is pretty good, and the stunt doubles are well blended in with the real actors most of the time. Some of the dialogue is good with the humor and stories as well, but just like with Halloween episodes of other shows I've reviewed, this one could have easily taken place on some other night. There's just not that much Halloween in this. Plus, Dawn was always one of the weaker and more annoying characters in the show. Next, in second place, we have the episode aptly named Halloween, Season 2, Episode 6. As the name would suggest, this episode takes the Halloween theme much more seriously. We open with Buffy fighting a vampire in a pumpkin patch. Huh, already off to a good start. Little does she know, Spike, who is still the main villain at this point of the show, sent one of his lackeys to film the fight so he could study her technique. And that's when his lover vampire Drusilla drops a hint that another force is coming to weaken the Slayer. When is it? Tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's Halloween. Nothing happens on Halloween. Someone's come to change it all. If you paid attention to Spike's line, in the Buffy verse, Halloween is supposed to be the one night that real monsters stay inside because they see scary people on Halloween as being too cliché. It's admittedly an original twist for a horror-themed show that also lulls the Scooby gang into a false sense of security on this night. Meanwhile, we also get subplots for our main cast that are directly mirrored in the costumes they put on. Buffy wants to know what it's like to be a normal girl that Angel, the vampire with a soul, would get to spend a lot of time with on dates. So she goes as an 18th century noblewoman. Willow is struggling between her shy insecurities, having her hide herself as much as possible, and Buffy encouraging her to put herself out there more so she gets noticed. This results in Buffy buying her a revealing costume, but she ends up putting on a cheesy ghost costume over it. Lastly, Xander is struggling with proving his masculinity when Buffy saves him from the bully instead of letting him try to save himself, even though everyone knows that would have ended with him getting his ass kicked. I think I just violated the guy code big time. Poor Xander. Boys are so fragile. Human boys are so fragile. Actually, all humans are fragile. So anyway, he goes as a soldier. But when Halloween night commences, a new bad guy reveals himself. Meet Ethan Rain, a man from Giles' past who has become a little too buddy-buddy with dark magic. He uses a spell connected to the Roman god Yanis to transform everyone into their costumes. So now Willow is a real ghost walking through walls in her skimpy outfit. Xander is a real soldier who now has combat expertise but doesn't know who anyone is and Buffy becomes the most useless character when she changes into a real rich girl who, well, she actually tells you. I was brought up a proper lady. I wasn't meant to understand things. I'm just meant to look pretty and then someone nice will marry me. Possibly a baron. 
I think that's the most honest thing anyone born into money has ever said. This is a fun episode with some great plotline reveals and character development. By the end of it, Xander beats up his bully, Willow lets go of her insecurities just in time to get Oz's attention, and Buffy has a greater appreciation for who she is. An episode with a great beginning, middle, and an ending. And now we come to our first place winner, the even more fun Halloween episode of this series. In first place, it's Fear Itself, Season 4, Episode 4. We open with our Scooby gang carving pumpkins, or in Xander's case, attempting to carve pumpkins. Once again, each character is having their own struggles that gets tested by tonight's monster. Willow is secretly worried that she's not ready to handle more powerful magic, Oz is constantly living in fear that next time he turns into a werewolf he'll kill someone close to him, Xander feels like he doesn't fit in with the rest of the group since he's not in college, nor does he have superpowers like his slayer, witch, and werewolf friends, and Buffy feels like she'll never find a man who will actually stay in her life and love her. This time the monster is... wait a minute, is that Zack from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? <laughs> I come bearing spiders. Apparently he finally got over his fear of bugs and he made it to college. Oh, good for him. Anyway, the Black Ranger is the one who introduces this Halloween's villain. He digs up a mystical symbol that he and the rest of his frat buddies assume just looks spooky and doesn't do anything. It's all part of this Halloween college frat party the Scoobies are attending. The idea is that the guests go through a haunted house before getting to the actual party. This ends up working better for the monster than it does for everyone else. Because when the painted symbol is triggered by a drop of blood, the spooky things in the frat house suddenly come to life! Before you know it, the Scoobies are dealing with bats, zombies, a talking severed head, and various mind games played on the individual characters based on their fears. Season 2's Halloween theme was about becoming someone else for a night, and this episode simply focused on the holiday's theme of fear. Their fears are each manifested in physical form. It's like if Eternal Darkness Sandy's Requiem was set inside of a frat house, except all the frat boys are dead and only a bunch of mystery-solving kids remain. Eventually, they discover that the symbol belongs to an ancient Celtic fear demon who is using the fears to bring himself into the living world. When they try to escape, they're greeted by a familiar hero with an unlikely weapon for him. Giles? Groovy. But still not as scary as when we first see Giles in this episode. Happy, ha Hello, Buffy. Oh. My. God. It's a sombrero. In attempting to stop the summoning, Buffy of course ends up triggering the summoning. But luckily for our heroes, the demon's physical form is not nearly as scary as his illusions. This is Gaknar? Big overture. Little show. I imagine that's what Stormy Daniels said to Trump. Well, after easily defeating the monster, the Scoobies regroup at Giles' house with some good old Halloween candy. The episode has great pacing, a brilliant Buffy-style twist, and best of all, great atmosphere. The cheesy decorations end up becoming creepier as the demon's powers grow stronger, and the score goes farther for giving us an eerie episode with fun scares. And those are the Halloween episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The entire show is on Hulu, so you can enjoy it whenever you like. If you like this review, check out these other videos so you can further live Halloween all year long. Stay safe, and have a good quarantine-oween. Goodbye, friends!